Good morning, party people. I'm going to start off by making a last call for the Seattle area. I know there's at least two more people in the Seattle area that sent a request to connect. They made a call, text, or something like that. I'm still drudging down through my text messages trying to find who you are so we can get together and I can help you if possible. I don't want to leave without helping some of you people. I helped a guy yesterday diagnose a problem, primarily was an ETM problem. He thought the transmission was gone. You don't want to replace a transmission at the tune of $5,000 if you got a $400 ETM problem. Probably saved him a lot of money. Also, I helped a guy yesterday that had done an engine swap and several other things to a car and he couldn't get it to crank. Uh, he's been without this car running, I think he said eight years, maybe longer. I went to his location, got the car cranking within minutes. I mean, within 30 minutes. We talked for a few minutes, started troubleshooting, and got the car running. They were chasing some uh, wiring issue that is blowing a fuse, but that wasn't stopping the car from cranking. So we got the car cranking. He's good to go. I said all that to say this, there is some benefit to having me stop by and connect with you if you got one of these P80 Volvos, Volvo 850, S&V 70s from 93 to 2000. I'm useful with other uh, vehicles as well, but man, I'm like a magician with those. So if you got one of those cars, you got something going on, you need a little help, little guidance, contact me. now. I met with a couple people yesterday that for some reason they thought that there was no cost to having me help them. Well, I don't officially charge for cost if you don't have nothing to pay. I've mentioned that to people. I've also mentioned that I have a video linked in the description below that breaks down my cost in helping people. You know, some of you people, if you have a car that you can't drive, you got to tow it to the shop. Some of these shops that is able to fix your car may be 30 miles away. I had a car towed in Alexander, Virginia. Cost me $275 to have the car towed 8 feet. I don't know how much a 30 mile tow would cost, but it's a lot longer than 8 feet. So anyway, you got that cost. You drop it off at the mechanic. He has to troubleshoot it. He has to get parts. He has to fix it. Hopefully, they fix it without doing a bunch of unnecessary stuff. And on average, you walk out of there $350 lighter. If you had a tow involved, that's another $100, $200. Bucks. You have $550 lighter. Um, the average repair at one shop that I know of is about $1,300. So if you have someone like me that can come over and troubleshoot that because I primarily work on one vehicle, that's the one I drive every day, probably going to save you money. Most people, 50 cent on the dollar, even after they pick up my expenses. Uh, that brings me to that, my expenses. And now let's have a little business meeting, help take care of some housekeeping and let you know how things are flowing. I have my cost of living back home. In Cincinnati, I'm paying my uh, rent, I'm paying my utilities, I'm paying my car registrations, all that stuff. That's my cost of living at home. When I'm on the road trying to assist people, I got cost of living where you are now. I got hotels. We stay in hotels because that's what's most comfortable for Diane. This is my gig. Robert DIY running around trying to help people get their Volvos fixed. This is my gig. Not Diane's gig. Now, there's a little real TikTok style video that was out. It sounded like it had Kevin Hart's name on it. And it had a lady. She pointed at her wedding ring and was talking to her husband. She said, you see this? This means we best friends. When we become best friends, my BS becomes your BS. And your BS becomes my BS. Got that? So, Diane understands that. She rides along. Now, there are people that are able to house us 
in their houses. That has proven to be weird and uncomfortable in most cases. Diane likes her privacy. Everybody understands that. And she don't particularly want to run around town doing grocery shopping and stuff like that with people. I understand that. So her request for this gig that I'm doing is put her comfortably in a hotel. I say comfortably. You know, we normally stay in Best Westerns, Comfort Inns. Holiday Inn Express, we're not staying in the Hilton or the Marriott and, and the Taj Mahal, nothing like that. So the, the, the cost is fair, not expensive, you know, not cheap. One time we rolled into Kalamazoo, Michigan. There was some sporting event going on. We ended up staying at the Red Light Inn, I'm, I mean the Red Roof Inn. There was all kind of people connecting with people, like this was some dating website connection point. Then there was people uh, picking up their items that they do their self-medication with. Then there was mice and rats running through the room. Not comfortable, you know, so we try to stay in places that are comfortable. Now, if we're paying hotel rooms, hotel fees include a tourism fee, uh, occupancy tax fee, a sales room tax fee, and then the room itself. That, that cost adds up. I'm putting gas in the car to drive 20, 30 miles to see you, to help you. I'm driving back. Uh, this trip, I wasn't able to load up on my tools, so I purchased a couple tools, you know. Uh, we got to eat, I'm trying to eat halfway healthy, you know. So most instances, I'm at about $150 a day. Here, I'm at about 200 a day. Now, if people are willing to pay and able to pay, 50 an hour, I got to work four hours in that day just to cover my expenses. That's no money in my pocket. That's paying the community for me being here. I'm all right with that. Now, usually when people request my presence and I have to travel to their location, they pay my travel expense from home or from wherever I'm at to their location, and then they cover my room and cost of living while I'm there, and then they pay 50 an hour if they can. Of course, on this gig I'm at, I critically need the cost of living covered, and if you can, you pay 50 an hour for my presence. Now, if you take your car to a shop, they got overhead too, especially if they're on a busy road. They got their, their rent, uh, tools, equipment, services, laundry, uh, subscriptions to their maintenance services and all that stuff so they get that's why they charge you a hundred dollars just to show up to plug the machine in for diagnostic and then they charge anywhere from ninety dollars to 175 an hour to work on your car working on cars is expensive I'm trying to fix your car now my whole gig is if I can get my cost of living covered I'm good and if people can pay 50 an hour over that, I'm thrilled. You know, it's a plus for me. Yes, I'm in the red. Now, Diane and I actually flew here from Cincinnati to Seattle, Washington, $117 a piece. I couldn't drive here that cheap. When I started my ticker, whether I'm in the red or in the yellow or in the green, that was already paid for. That has nothing to do with this status of me being in the red. Once I got here and started spending money from here, buying a couple of tools I needed, getting our rooms, getting situated, buying a couple supplies we couldn't take into the airport, that's when this financial situation started. I'm not trying to beat you guys up about my business practices and being in the red. I'm okay with that. I just don't want it to deteriorate any further. So. When I show up at your house, it costs me money to get there. So if you have any, help me out. If you don't have any, let me know before I come your way because I don't want to spend $15, 20 $80 to come to you. And then I'm surprised that you don't have any funds to pay for me to come visit and help you. Yes, it's helping you when I can fix your car for... $200 versus somebody else fixing it for five, 600 I call that a help. 
is helpful when I can actually fix what's wrong without you paying for me to troubleshoot and guess on four or five other things that's not fixing your car. Then do you no good, take your car somewhere, pay them five, six hundred dollars to try to fix your car and don't fix it, and then they gotta charge you another five, six hundred dollars to actually fix it. The twelve hundred dollars out of pocket instead of five hundred, when I could probably take care of that for my cost of living in two hours. Three hundred bucks versus twelve hundred. That's a deal. That's just the way I look at it. So this may be the last day I'm in Seattle. Unless you contact me saying, hey Robert. I know you're in Seattle. I'm within an hour's drive of Seattle. I need your help. Other than that, I'm going to go through my messages for a little while. I can't spend all day doing that. Trying to find people close to Seattle that requested my help. If you're not watching every day, I'm sorry. I missed you. I don't want to miss you. Then I'm going towards Portland. Then I'm going towards Eugene. Then I'm going to Northern California. And I'm working my way down over to Vegas, down to... Phoenix, Arizona. So if you need my help and you can help me offset some of this cost, that living cost, I filled up the gas tank the other day, $78 worth of gas. Nobody's giving me freebies because I want to help people. We all got to pitch in and cover the cost, you know, so that's where I'm at with that. So during this trip, I may never get out of the red. I'm okay with that. However, I can't get too far in the red because I got other obligations. I have not hit the lottery. I'm not some rich guy running around having fun fixing other people's cars for my enjoyment. I'm out here trying to help you save money if at all possible. And if not, I understand that. A lot of you guys can use the videos and fix it yourself. That's great. I'd love to meet you, meet, greet, stuff like that. It all takes time. It all takes money. If you can help, that's great. I appreciate it. Again, last call for those of you in the Seattle, Washington area with an hour. Uh, Seattle, Tacoma, Olympia. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss anybody. I'd like to help you if I can. And today's video has a few clips with me working on this S70 I've been tinkering with. Got that mostly taken care of. I got to put a headlight lens on that today. That gentleman locally was kind enough to donate to the cause. And then she'll be, I think, set for a little while. Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert. That's me. This video contains things that I encounter throughout the day. If for some reason I complete a task and you would like to see the details, you can click on the link in the description area below. This video also contains tips and tricks that I learned throughout the years. I plan on leaving this video accessible for about 30 days. After that, you can view it through my Patreon account. Thank you very much for watching. Kicking off today, about to see if the new ride's going to shift like it's supposed to. It was shifting super smooth after that second fluid swap yesterday. Sounds a little funny this morning. Let's see. Here we go. It should shift, shift around. Turn left onto 15th Avenue Southeast, then turn left onto 228th Street Southeast. Nope. Not shifting right. Oh well, hopefully Take we'll... Take the next left onto 228th Street Southeast. Hopefully we'll keep the deterioration at a minimum and it'll stay where it is, won't get any worse. So it should shift by the In time In 800 I feet, turn right onto Bothell Everett Highway. It should shift right by the time I hit the highway. I'm trying to get it to drop in a second. Starting my tinker time. We're going to replace the ABS module, replace a heater core, replace an armrest cup holder, replace the shifter indicator light bulb, and I think that may be it for this car for tonight. So let's get cracking. I like doing an ABS module on these NA cars, man. You really don't have to remove anything out of the way hardly. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this air box. Take this clamp loose, push that off. Be careful with these two vacuum lines. Move those out of the way. And then I'll have full access. Heck, I probably only need to remove this. Let me just remove this and reach these screws on this ABS module and do it that way. I'm leaving everything else connected. Just going to remove this exhaust tube. Got the ABS module replaced. I don't have my hose pinchers, so that's all we got for under here. 
I'm going to go ahead close the hood. Well, I'm not going to close the hood because I'm going to lose some coolant in the car. So I'm getting ready to pull the under panel from under the dash and get at that heater core, get at that shifter light, and replace the cup holder in it. And here we are, folks. No light. Light. No light. Light. Got this lower panel put back on. Put a light bulb in there. I love me. Snug that thing. down yeah. until it's snug. And that's it. Don't tighten those too tight where you split that. The glove compartment was stuck to the vinyl. And it broke at that corner right there. But all the rest of them are good. And we're going to put this back together. We got the heater core in. It had an original old heater core. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.